Hello everyone. Welcome to the second PUC economics class. In this session, let us start the part 2 of macroeconomics. As all of you know, in this year's second PUC syllabus, there are four lessons in part 1 microeconomics and four lessons in part 2 macroeconomics. So, the four lessons of microeconomics are all covered in the previous sessions and from this session let us start the first lesson of macroeconomics that is introduction to macroeconomics. As you all, as you all know macro is large micro is small and macro is large. So, when we study about the economy as a whole with all its economical units in aggregates, we study it in the form of macroeconomics. So, now let us see about the origin of this word macro. The word macro is origin by a Greek word called M-A-K-R-O-S that is macros which means large. Here in macroeconomics we will study all the theories of the economical units of a country and as economy as a whole in aggregates. So therefore it is referred as large. So microeconomics is one where we studied the individual behaviors of a firm of a concern or of the individual consumer consumers behavior wherein here under the macroeconomics will consider an industry not an individual firm or an individual consumer but will take into consideration the aggregates of the price level demand and supply as well as the employment structure everything. Now let us see about what is macroeconomics. Macroeconomics is nothing but it is that branch of economics which studies economy as a whole. So you all understood now that macroeconomics is that branch of economics which studies the economy as a whole. So the here the macroeconomics studies first about the welfare of all the residents of a country under a system of economy as well as it also studies about the government's effort to improve the situation of economy through the eradication of poverty by creating an additional poverty alleviation programs as well as creation of the employment opportunities everything is learnt under this. So who is the father of economics modern economics if I ask you easily you will say Adam Smith is the father of modern economics but when we know about the macroeconomics it is very important to learn that who is the father of macroeconomics he is J M Keynes that is John Maynard Keynes. So Keynes is the father of macroeconomics because he wrote a book in the year related to general employment theory of money and in that book in the year 1936 he published and he referred about the interdependence of different sectors. So the emergence of macroeconomics was felt in the year 1936 after the book of J. M. Keynes was published. So by that time there was a great depression in UK and Northern America. Unemployment situation in Northern America was 3% and it rose to 33% within 5-6 years and now all the classical economical traditional principles that were followed proved to be wrong because only government cannot give 
employment opportunity to all the laborers who are ready to work the classical economical traditions was saying that the labor who is willing to work will definitely find a work and he will get a job and the factory will work into its fullest capacity but it did not prove right after this great depression was experienced in the year 1929 so after this they all went to the keynesian theory of economics which said that there is an interdependence of different sectors of the economy <coughs> and these different sectors are there are four different sectors of an economy and they are the consumer sector the government sector the household sector and the foreign trade sector so for the successful running and functioning of an economy the interdependence of all these four sectors are sought with so therefore j m keynes insisted on the interdependence of all these four sectors and therefore it proved to be very useful to the successful functioning of an economy and till today it is being followed everywhere uh, the situations of countries like uk and america is not the same as in the case of 1930s 40s so because of the rapid growth of population as well as the rapid industrialization there is a greater need for these four sectors to work with interdependence so therefore today everywhere all these four sectors have joined their hand together under the system of macroeconomics and they are being working for the successful welfare of the citizens of the country so before we move towards the different topics of macroeconomics and let before we know about the scope and significance of macroeconomics let us see about how the macroeconomics differ first from microeconomics so the microeconomics is one which studies the behavior of individual units so the behavior of individual economical units are studied here under microeconomics for example firm consumer or even the uh, it studies about the individual levels of price wherein when we come to the macroeconomics here it studies the larger segments of an economy like general employment level general price level general output level and what is the general equilibrium that is taken place in each and every major sectors so here the individual firms analysis is made wherein under macroeconomics the industries performance is analyzed in comparatively with the previous is is performance as well as with the competitors performance now let's see about the second difference in microeconomics the microeconomics is one wherein the individual economic agents take decision here the individual economic agents are bothered about their own welfare as well as their own interest so the individual economic agents worry about the self growth and they are the decision makers in the case of microeconomics when we come to the macroeconomics institutional agents take decision here these institutional agents are comprised of government cooperative sector institutions as well as the banks and different types of organizations so based on their experience experiences these institutional agents take decisions and government listens to these institutions because they together constitute a major portion of the economical units of the economical units of a country the third one is partial equilibrium analysis as you all know the microeconomics studies about the individual units of a society it does the partial equilibrium analysis whatever the results that are derived out of the analysis of microeconomical units is not going to match to the macroeconomical analysis because here it studies only the microeconomical units with partial equilibrium analysis it does not consider the major portion of the country and therefore it is mostly unreliable and it is con 
confined to a particular area or it is confined to a particular segment of economy wherein when we come to the macroeconomics the general equilibrium analysis is considered and the general equilibrium analysis is based on the equilibrium <coughs> equilibrium that exists between the demand and supply forces of every entity for example if it is unemployment the demand and supply whatever the number of labors are required and whatever the number of opportunities are created why there is an inequilibrium between these two so the general equilibrium analysis studies about the pricing levels at times there are inflations and sometimes there will be deflations also that is price hike as well as price fall so all these are studied and therefore the macroeconomical units study the general equilibrium analysis the next one is the microeconomical units comprises of theories such as consumer behavior production and cost and some other factors related to individual firms wherein the macroeconomical units theories are comprised by uh, the uh, comprised by units like outputs and pricing levels as well as the employments so here the national income is very much bothered in the case of macroeconomics wherein in the case of microeconomics individual income is taken care of because each and every individual household is an economical unit and each every unit each and every unit of these households are comprised together and they are consolidated and ultimately under the macroeconomic general equilibrium analysis all these individual household sectors are considered into and therefore these two go joining their hands together you cannot imagine microeconomics without the existence of macroeconomics as well as macroeconomics without the support and assistance of microeconomics these two are called as either sides of the coins because without an individual unit or without the smallest unit of a society is a house so this is an individual unit so without the analysis of individual units of different societies of a big country the macroeconomical calculations and analysis cannot be taken care of so in a country like india with huge populations and with greater amount of money is spent on different sectors like infrastructure social infrastructure or economical infrastructure or on the social welfare of the country or on the poverty alleviation programs all these are considered into and for that purpose only we need to go to the depth of the economical units that are prevailing in the macro microeconomical units so the last one is the microeconomical results are more unrealistic and they are not much useful to derive any conclusions the microeconomical units are unrealistic because it is based on the analysis of an individual unit or a particular region the results that are derived belong to a smaller portion of the society or a smaller portion of the economy as a whole so therefore naturally they will be unrealistic and the decisions of economical aspects of a country or of a government are not totally dependent on microeconomical unit and microeconomical results wherein here when we come to the macroeconomics the results that we derive out of the macroeconomical analysis are very useful and they are most realistic and they are very useful in frame, framing the policies because government takes decisions on different types of uh, policies in regard to the welfare of the country by referring to the macroeconomical calculations and analysis because it has proved more realistic as it consists of the study of a society at large 
it comes it, it is involved with the study of the economical situation and what are all the hindrances that are preventing the economical progress and government considers this into a serious matter and it takes decisions likewise therefore the microeconomical results are good and but they are unrealistic when we compare with the macroeconomical results therefore the macroeconomical results are most realistic so here as i said j m keynes the father of macroeconomics explained there is a greater interdependence of all the four sectors these four sectors are the government sector the household sector the consumer sector as well as the <coughs> foreign trade sector here the government supplies the factors of production to the society and the household sector supplies labors to the industries so each are interdependent the factors of production are supplied by the government as well as the individual households being both they are the consumers as well as they are the suppliers of factors of production so here you can see there is a greater interdependence of these two sectors government sector as well as the household sector wherein these two sectors together come to the third sector that is the consumer sector here a consumer is one who buys the final products who is one who pays to pays to the final product and he is the one who generates money or revenue to the government so for that purpose whatever the government sector supplies the factors of production and whatever the household sector supplies the second factor of production that is labor along with these two the products are produced and the services are generated and both these services and products are consumed by consumers and by consuming them he in return pays revenues or income to the government that he pays money to the services he experience or he <coughs> undergo and therefore it is the situation where the government depends on the consumer and the government and the government gets money to the uh, treasury to the treasury with the help of this third sector called as consumer sector as well as another one sector is called as foreign exchange or foreign trade sector this involves both imports as well as exports here both the income that is owing the here the income that is due to us from other countries or the money that we owe to the other countries with the exchange of goods in the name of imports and exports also matter a lot into the economical progress of a country here the four sectors are interdependent and therefore only the father of macroeconomics that is j m keynes has proved to be very useful and his theories have proved to be very useful and they are called as keynesian economical theories so now hope you have all understood about the difference between microeconomics and ma macroeconomics under microeconomics you studied about the theory of individual consumer behavior and the diminishing marginal utility the utility analysis the budget sets and budget uh, indifference curves as well as the production and cost structure the elasticity of demand as well as elasticity of supply and individual consumers reflexes to the market variations all these you have studied under microeconomics but here when you come to the macroeconomics you will study about the national income calculation the gross domestic product net domestic product as well as net national product the calculation of all these as well as the general income level the general general pricing level and output level and the employment situation of the country and also any other matters in relation to the economy as a large you will learn under macroeconomics so with this i conclude this session and in our next session let's move towards the scope and significance of macroeconomics thank you